This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. We will jump into this now. So before we start a ranked draft for Core Set 2020, which means it will be best of one, I want to remind everyone that my content is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their website by clicking on the panel below on Twitch and the link in the description below on YouTube, uh, and they'll know I sent you there. You can find all the Core Set 2020 stuff you want. So let's hop into this draft. I've had all this gold sitting around for so long because um, it hasn't been ranked in a while. Well, this is a pretty strong pack. I think Air Elemental, Frostlings, and Pacifism are all things you first pick. Um, I mean, I'm leaning towards the removal, uh, as nice as these guys are. Yeah, we'll take the removal. Well, I could take another removal spell here and not feel too bad about it. Uh, it's not as good as pacifism, but it's fine. I do like winged words. You know, ending up in a deck that has a couple of those usually feels pretty good. But I think I'll go with another removal spell here. Yeah. Okay. Well, here I think we go with Cloudkin Seer. I haven't gotten to build the Blue-White Skies deck in this format yet. At least not one that had Empyrean Eagles. Let's hope we... I'd be pretty happy to do that. That's my my goal here. So another fairy miscreant. Some of those might wheel. Um, kind of just leaning towards Octo Prophet here. Smuggler is good, but I don't think I think it and Octo Prophet are pretty comparable. This is kind of a late Lavakin brawler. Not crazy late or anything. I can just stick to my guns and take an Octo Prophet. I think that's fine. Okay, well, this is a pretty late Rapacious Dragon. Um, if we end up like red blue, we could splash uh, Pacifism thanks to him. Uh, yeah, and I think you gotta take him. I like him a lot. Big Flyer that also gives you some fixing is pretty good. Well, there's some more fixing. I think grabbing a Scuttle Mud here is a good call. We have the fixing, that's for sure. Um, so we could take Dagger Sail Aeronaut, Moreland Inquisitor's a fine two drop. I'm kind of leaning towards the Inquisitor here. Yeah. Okay, no. Smuggler came back, I think we take him. Um, fire elemental, you know, if you end up with enough elemental synergies, you could do worse. Okay, so bird grabber is probably going to be pretty good in our deck, but so is ember cat. And I think the ember cat, I think it'll be, these red cards all being here, it makes me feel good about red. Uh, but I think I want the ember cat more than a bird grabber. Uh, here we'll grab another smuggler. Here we'll grab a lava can brawler. So yeah, red became really open there near the end of that pack. Ooh, man. Speaking of 3-3 three, three wolf tokens, <laughs> there's a night pack ambusher. <clears throat> I think there's still every chance we end up like red-green. I mean, we have, what, uh, three blue cards and uh, three white cards. So, you know, he is not a crazy thing to take here. He's incredibly strong, so I think I want to take him. I'm about to sneeze. But yeah, I think he's a really good card, so I want to take him. Uh, yeah, Night Pack Ambusher. Good enough to take here, even though we aren't currently in that color. Well, uh, I mean, Air Elemental's pretty good, and blue could still be our secondary color. Uh, so I think I'm going to take it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Creeping Trailblazer um, is here. Also reduced to ashes, but I think we'll take a trailblazer. So 
So reduce, unchain Berserker. So at this point to me, I think, I think we could still end up red, green or blue, green uh, or blue, red. But other than that, um, yeah. So do we need a return to ashes type card more than an unchained Berserker? We do have two smugglers already. That does make the Berserker better. I think I'd still rather have a reduce though. Okay, so green is looking good. I think we take a thick crasher. Um, this doesn't look so good. Uh, you know, anticipate a moat piranha are both fine. Um, growth cycles not so much. Vile of dragon fire is okay. There's just, yeah, <laughs> this pack is. Yeah, Dragonfire probably is the way to go. Which is very unexciting. Another smuggler? All right. <laughs> Don't mind splashing like Eternal Isolation either though, honestly. Um, I think it's a pretty good removal spell. And we already have Rapacious Dragon and Scuttle Mutt, which is probably already enough. Yeah, let's take it. So in terms of duplicates, we've got two Smugglers, two Octo Prophets at this point. Uh, that's probably enough for us to grab a Pattern Matcher here. Another Pattern Matcher. Don't really think I want a second one. Um, green is just not looking open, sadly. Um, like in terms of actual cards we want to play in green it's not really it's not really happening i mean our trailblazer i mean the three cards we have are good um and maybe i just take a mammoth spider here because it is green and it's not like our blue is stacked or anything so i think we'll take that spider um fortress crab's all right but honestly i think i'd rather have a rip scale predator yeah. Okay. Morning, Adept. Moron. <laughs> Should just call you Adept. It feels like I'm calling you a name every time I say your name. Um, Scorch Bitter. I mean, sure. Why not? Oh, I do like Glaring Aegis a reasonable amount. Daybreak Chaplain's fine. Okay. Well, <laughs> in which direction are we going? I mean, I think at this point, we need to keep blue in mind because we do have some really good blue cards. Um, and we could splash like a Cloud Seer. That sounds a little silly to me, though. Um, hello, Biceps. I... Yeah, I don't know for red, green, or red, blue still. Or, uh, yeah, red, white. Red, white, or red, green, those are our choices. Um, yeah, it might just be God's willing here. The green cards here are fine, but they aren't great. Um, yeah, you're probably right, my blue is better than my... Mm. Are we though? Is that true? <laughs> I think between night picking, I mean, night pack ambusher is way better than any of those, these blue cards. Um, but you're right, our blue average wise is probably a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, this pack's hard because there really isn't anything in it that I think is that great. <laughs> I know we're playing red, you know, pretty firmly at this point. Uh, but apart from that, you know, and the red card here is not great. Yeah, Winged Words is tempting. For sure. 
Yeah, Ambusher can win the game on its own, and that is true. I mean, it's a straight-up bomb, and that's why it's kind of hard to decide what direction I want to go in. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm going to go with the winged words, guys, as, as you've suggested. Okay, another pacifism. That may lock me in on white pretty strongly, even though we can't play our ambusher. Um, pacifism, two pacifisms is really good. Uh, yeah. Ooh, okay, all right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if that's how things are going to go, I guess I'll take it. So this pack, I wish, I wish we could take Master Splicer as well. Uh, but um, we can't. <laughs> We do take the Cavalier, though. It's really, really good. Um, not much more to say about it. So shock and raise the alarm. We definitely do need more low creatures. Um, and that is what raise the alarm is, um, basically. So, yeah, we'll take, I think... I mean, it's tempting to take shock, I think. Um, ah, shoot, I'm just going to do it. Shock's too good. Okay, how often are you going to be flying, buddy? Not very often. At this point, anyway. Yeah, I mean, we'd, it's hard. Unfortunately, Night Pack Ambusher is double green, so splashing it will be a challenge. Um, I think I'll take the mask. And... I do need two drops. I think I'm going to take the Chaplain. Okay, another Rapacious Dragon. I'm talking about fixing. <laughs> I'll take him. And here's a Rugged Highlands. <laughs> that would be pretty crazy if we, <laughs> if we pull that off. So we have two, three, four, two drops, and one, one drop at this point. Um, I think we take the Highlands. Um, how many creatures do we have? Do we want Inspired Charge? Excuse me, why aren't you letting me look at my deck? <clears throat> we have, I guess I'm just going to count manually. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I think an Inspired Charge is fine. Ooh, I like this late pack Mastiff. I think a Disenchant here. I don't think I want two of those. Um, Ripscale Predator. Oh yeah, I forgot we have this guy. And this. <laughs> we had a couple more white playables that we took early on in the draft. So we got really good fixing, but like I'm not really I'm not really sure. I don't like the key at all. <clears throat> Incidentally. Um, especially I mean, yeah, Goblin Smuggler is just so much better. So probably not gonna run fire elemental. We have so much fixing. <laughs> Should we try to splash our night pack ambusher? <laughs> we have rugged highlands, two rapacious dragons, and a scuttle mutt. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I don't think that's the right thing to do. I just feel like we need to take advantage of this fixing somehow. Um, but <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do it. It's 
frustrating when you get so much fixing and then it doesn't matter because you're not splashing anything. Now, I mean, it'll help us cast like Cavalier of Dawn and things like that. Um, helps us ramp, etc. So, I mean, we leave it in. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. But... So Rapacious Dragon does produce two treasure tokens, which... Hmm. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you run a card that you can splash on... Um, like, you would run a card and then have two sources of fixing, right? And that's kind of what we have with Rapacious Dragon, right? Two sources of fixing. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do it. I mean, it's probably not the safest move, but, uh... Yeah, that's true. That's true, we do have to go past four mana, if, yeah, to you know, play it on turn six or whatever. It's still really good on turn six. Nah, I mean, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's the right thing to do. <laughs> I can't do it. Okay, so we need to cut a couple more cards. So is Pattern Matcher going to be any good? Probably not really. Um, <laughs> I think we can probably cut Pattern Matcher and like a Daybreak Chaplain. Yeah. Also, we don't need to be running this now. Why does it want me to do 9-8 split this way? Seems strange to me. Alright, I think this looks fine. It's not a spell deck. I mean, I think creature-wise we ended up with 13 or 14. Let's see. 13. <clears throat> and it's more than that, really, because we also have Raise the Alarm and Mask of Immolation, which are both creatures. looks fine yeah it seems solid to me I mean I feel like 3-2 is pretty attainable at least I think if I had a third rapacious dragon I would have considered it of course we have both of our rapacious dragons in this hand just reminding us that um we should have been splashing it. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we just enter turn. Chaplain. I don't love the one mana spitter either. I'm with you. Especially because our deck's not crazy aggressive, but I think it's okay. So, we can use this treasure right away to make, excuse me, to cast Pacifism or something, but hardly seems worth it. Okay. 
Okay, so I think we'll cast Eternal Isolation on the Air Elemental. Then the question is, do I want to pacify Netcaster Spider just yet? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to play another dragon. So, I mean, if we can pacify stuff that can block um, and just attack away, I think, you know, that's going to look pretty nice for us. Yeah, so I think we do it. I think we go pacifism on Netcaster Spider. And, uh, yeah, under turn. Trade it out for that, the wolf. <laughs> okay. I probably should have moved the mask to one of these just because then I could have gotten a little bit of value out of it. Oh yeah, this is best of one, I just remembered. <laughs> I always forget during the draft. Oh, okay. So that makes you a 3-5. I've only got three blockers over there. Yeah, I think we just attack with our dragon for now though. Yeah, three four. You're right. I said three five, but it is it is in fact three four. <clears throat> sure. Take it. <clears throat> we have all the mana we could ever want. Ever. Ten of it, to be exact. <laughs> So, like, if they sh decide to pump their Metropolis Sprite here, I think I kill it with my Mask of Immolation. So, we let that resolve. Ooh, I should have blocked first. I'm stupid. Blocking first would have been really good. Then I wouldn't take this three either. <laughs> The ubiquitous diamond knight. Ah, oh, crap. Yeah, that's the real problem here, is now that really takes away my tempo. If I draw another land here, I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. So glad I drew a land. <laughs> That just mean we're dead. Three, six, eight, ten. Not quite, but close. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> what are we running? Like 19 lands or something? We cast three spells that whole game. 
Hard to win when you do that. Hard to win. Let's look at our deck real quick. <laughs> nope, just bad luck. Yeah, I mean, Frost Lynxes are pretty awesome. <laughs> Take out a land and add the wolf. Yeah, going to 16 lands and putting extra strain on my mana base sounds like a really good idea. Yeah, Frostlinks has been the MVP a lot of times. Red-White does kind of feel underpowered, and I don't think we really got there on the ideal Red-White deck either. Our deck is sort of... I think all-in aggro is the best place to be with it, basically, and that's definitely not where we are. Yeah, blue is so deep at commons that Frostlinks may not even be the best one, which is kind of weird to me, I think. Um, they might have Convolute here, but I'm kind of okay with that. I think I try to play my Brawler. There's a real good chance they have Bone to Ash. Well, that was a pretty good draw, right? Well, <laughs> that felt a little different than the last one. It'll be interesting to see what happens now that Ranked will always be on this set from now on. Um, we'll be on the most recent set. Unfortunately, I doubt it'll end up helping me a whole lot to reach Mythic because I'll be streaming a lot less starting in a few weeks. And actually, next week I'll be out of town, so there won't be any streams. So, uh... Videos are all scheduled for YouTube or will be scheduled for YouTube, though, in the next few days. So, All right. So, yeah, we'll keep this. It's not the most exciting hand ever, but... But yeah, once my uh, once once the semester starts and I'm teaching and everything, um, I think I haven't officially figured it out to be this exactly yet. But I think I'll only be streaming on like Thursday and Sunday. Uh, but I'll let you know when that happens. YouTube content I'm gonna try to keep on the same level it is now, uh, but we'll see. Okay, so I think. Just playing Smuggler and making Mastiff unblockable seems pretty attractive. Yeah. That's not nice.
Okay, so... And then we'll play... Yeah, Scuttlemutt. Well, thank God he's only got protection from blue. <laughs> big enough that eternal isolation actually does something so I may as well use it okay I think we just attack here and then I play the ember cat That's true. <laughs> the whole changing colors thing is pretty funny. Okay, well. Hmm. Wish I had more white mana right now, but I think the right thing to do is... Oh, I do have more white mana. That's right. Um, okay. Eh. I kind of think I'm just going to do the Aegis. Yeah, I'll do the Aegis on Pack Mastiff. And we're just going to attack them with everything. Even pumping him. I'm just hoping that pacifism plus aerial assault can help us uh, punch through the rest of the way. Like, if they're really aggressive here... Be aggressive. Come on. Be really aggressive. not as aggressive as I wanted you to be, but fine. So Scorch Spitter is definitely interesting. Um, so... Do I attack with my Mastiff? So if I pacify and attack with my Mastiff, they have to... Yeah, I think I'm going to put Pacifism right here. And... Kind of considering just attacking with everything here. Yeah, it's not worth it though. They have to block him one way or another. Okay. Ah, crap. That's really annoying. <laughs> well, I think that means we lose this one, too. Um, not necessarily, actually. I mean, the board state's all right.
Yeah, we're gonna block the wolf. Hey, we finally drew mana. Now, what happens though? <laughs> if I play my rip scale predator, we might just be dead anyway. Because this has to tap. We'll have two blockers. Yeah. I think we're dead either way. I guess there's no harm in showing him more about our deck, though, but yeah. Just imagine if we had mana for that like a hundred turns ago, you know? Yeah, we can drop to one, that's true. Gives us a tiny chance. And then we can aerial assault one on our turn. We're not gonna gain any life off of that, but. Okay. Ooh. Unfortunately, we can't really just start sending stuff over. I mean, Scorch Spitter, two attacks from it will kill them, but Goblin Smuggler has to tap two to do that, so. Okay, well, now I think we're dead, thanks to Trample and the additional creature. Yeah, we're dead. Okay. Got to break out of this slump at some point. Inquisitor. The threat of his activated ability is more likely to get him past. Uh, turns out it doesn't matter, but. Strange slow start for a red-white deck. Lord. Thank you for the resub, Sinister. So, might as well do this. Don't have anything else going on. I mean, we can shock something at the end of their turn, maybe. Thank you for the bits as well, Sinister. All right, well, I think we're gonna pacify the golem. Send in another attack.
Yeah, the Cavalier would be nice. <laughs> we haven't seen him today. She's not super scary. Um, two, four, five, six. Can we kill them on our turn? I think we might be able to just kill them. With some quick math here. So this is five. This is seven. No, I can't. I can't pump it enough. But I can drop them to one. At which point, Scorch Spitter attacking would be plenty, but... I could also just play my Rapacious Dragon. Kill Chandra and play Rapacious Dragon. That might be the safer, less all-in kind of move. Um... Two, four, five, six, yeah... Oh, wait a second. Rapacious Dragon changes the equation a little bit. No, it's still only one pump for this turn. Yeah, I think going face is the right thing to do. Thanks for all the gift subs too, Sinister. Luckily, this Chandra, when she's a problem, is when she can cast a spell from the graveyard. So hopefully they can't, like, shock and then get her get, get a spell back and shock again. I guess even if they do that, we're okay, but... That would be frustrating. Yeah, I mean, even if they, like, shocked twice or aerial assaulted twice, they're still dead, so. Yeah, everybody who just got a gift sub, don't forget you got some sweet hoop, hoop emotes, as we call them here. <laughs> Okay, so they're just... <laughs> they can steal two of my creatures with Chandra, just for fun, and it looks like that's what they're doing. Don't worry. I brought company. Or not. Okay, yep, that's a keeper. Ember Cat into Brawler is pretty nice. <laughs> what? <laughs> this should be interesting. <laughs> Do they have like six lot of the uh, Leafkin? That's like the only way I would run that, is if I had like six Leafkin in my deck.
Nope, that doesn't work because it's only when you tap a creature for mana, so... Prismite. Yep, they're playing the green ley line. They're also playing Field of the Dead, so some interesting things going on over there. I'm enjoying it, Sinister. It seems like a solid set. It's, you know, four sets sometimes are pretty fun. Oh yeah, they're playing, they're probably a newer player because they're playing some some rather questionable cards, let's say. Um, I think we're ready to give up our Ember Cat for sure <laughs> if they want to trade with it. Yeah, I think it's better than M19 so far. So far. Yeah. Diamond Knight is jacked. Yeah, the fact that it has Vigilance is kind of a pain now, that's for sure. See if they'll slow us down over there. If they get to eight mana, you know, that ley line is going to start doing something. This is definitely the scariest Diamond Knight I've seen so far in this format. I would have to say. for me. We need some flyers and in a hurry. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they're really not far still from getting their... They need one more land and then their ley line's going. At, at which point, we may be in some serious trouble. We do have a ton of removal, but Aerial Assault doesn't do it here. Obviously enough. Yep, oh, now they have the mana. <laughs> I talked smack about their ley line, and here we are. They've managed to go pretty crazy. I can kill the Diamond Knight in combat still, so... Things worked out for them here, for sure, but... Uh... Still don't recommend it. <laughs> Come on, pacifism. Okay. You walked in on me maybe losing Delay Line of Abundance. <laughs> However, if they ever do attack me 
it's not the end of the world. And if they just keep dumping eight mana into pumping their guys, it's not going to matter. Unless they have overcome. You know, that always... <laughs> That'll always ruin things for you. down to this turn. Or, never mind, they have another turn. <laughs> Fair enough. So I probably vile the healer. Yeah. Okay, it's not quite going to get us there, but it may be helpful if something happens to our dragon. And it gives us a blocker, which certainly matters. Uh, yeah, too bad my brawler was too big. Without the Aegis, he could have done it. <laughs> Just dump eight mana into pumping all your guys again. It'll be fine. Okay. Well... So I think if I can hold on to Lavakin Brawler, I should. Um, yeah. So much for holding on to Lavakin Brawler. We win anyway, though. See, even the ley line going off like that didn't didn't really do it for opponent. Putting all those counters on your guys is good and all, but not when you're not playing spells. That makes it kind of uh, a challenge. Luckily, they couldn't cast Overcome at instant speed, so... I think we can keep it. Big guys, sure, but we also have a three drop with haste, so. See if we can get to four and three with this thing or have to settle for three and three. Opponent has a hard mulligan decision, I guess. I mean, even with Thicket Crasher and stuff, those ley lines just... Like, they went down a card early, and then it didn't do anything for them until turn 8. Um, and that, in part, is what allowed me to sort of weather the storm, you know, of 
them putting all those counters. It got pretty scary and uh, until I realized that I had them at low enough life that they couldn't go too crazy. You know, their Vigilance guy was all that could attack. So... What's going on here? <laughs> we got a free win. Was that yesterday that we got a free win? No, it was the it was the day before, I think. We got a free win recently. We don't really want another one if we can help it. No. They were running Field of the Dead. They were running uh, the, th the three mana spell that brings a creature back and puts a counter on it. They had some, some interesting card choices. But, you know, that was a competitive game. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, there's that. Just trying to get all the Fields of the Dead. <laughs> that card is really cool. Got to give it to Field of the Dead. You should never run that uh, Field of the Dead, though, Unlimited. Even if it's a filler pick you grab because, you know, it's it's horrible. <laughs> it's basically just a worse land in Limited. Yeah, I think in Constructed, it's real neat, that card. Um, I think in EDH is probably where it'll take off the most, if I had to guess. Uh, Field of the Dead would go. I think my Smuggler's about to be... Okay. Or maybe he isn't. I might as well just attack with both. Um... Next turn we can play Rapacious Dragon, and then after that we can play Rip Scale Predator. They may just take both of these, which would be great if they're worried about a trick or something. Oh. Morning stretching. Kind of sad we can't play anything this turn. That's always frustrating mana-wise when you're like, okay, guess I'm not playing anything. <laughs> But next turn, we can start playing things. All right, so let's do the damages. And unfortunately, end our turn. Game one. They attack me for one, I'm guessing. Okay, so I think we just go for the attack here. It's a free one. Uh, if they decide to block, it doesn't matter. And if they take two, eh, it might matter down the road. <clears throat> I mean, I could use Inspired Charge, but it's not worth it yet. Maybe in a turn or two. Nice. Two free damage. Okay. That does put it out of range ish of uh, reduced ashes. Oh, hey. How about that? Um. I can do both, uh, which is pretty cool. So I think, I think I play my Rip Scale Predator first and then put Glaring Aegis on Rapacious Dragon and attack them for six. Yeah. 
See, even when you're not splashing, that Rapacious Dragon mana means business. Oh, do I want to actually put it on my Predator? I think I actually might. Yeah, I think I will. Because now... Finding lethal won't be too challenging, I don't think. Especially with Inspired Charge. Right, so I think we win the game thanks to Inspired Charge. Just attack with both our creatures. Yep, our deck seems solid enough. I don't think it's an incredible one, but 4-3, four, 5-3 three, three seems reasonable. We have a Cavalier that we just haven't seen. Yeah, I mean, we've drawn well some. Um, we also, our very first match, we played three spells the whole match. So, <laughs> kind of evens out, maybe. So, let's go for the kill. Got there. The deck is missing a wolf. I almost let chat talk me into trying to splash that wolf, but man, that would have that would have been bad. All right, so we get to 4 and 3 at least. I'll be right back. My cat of course is requesting to come into the room. I think this is a keep. Scuttlemutt makes it pretty good. We also finally have our Cavalier. So, I really hope they don't just play another Fairy Miscreant here. They do not. It's a really great kind of a problem, though. Um, We can actually play a turn four Cavalier, which might just be the best thing to do. All right, well, I guess we're gonna pacify that thing. Um, I guess we can hold off for now, actually, and just play Scuttlemutt. Yeah, Scuttlemutt also complicates the protection from red nonsense. <clears throat> I could blow up their gauntlets and give them a 3-3 three, three or whatever. It's not the worst. Okay, well. In that case, I think we're just going to go ahead and put Pacifism on the Drake. Oh, you know what I just realized I could do? Oh, no, never mind. I can change the color of creatures. I can't change the protection. Like, I can't change... Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Um, okay, so I think we might as well attack again for the life. Um, you know what? And we'll end our turn. Convolute could be a thing here. Um, that's for sure. Uh, let's attack with our guys. And I think we try to play our Cavalier. No. And I think... I think I'd rather replace Daybreak Chaplain with a 3-3. Okay, 
way. So we can't cast Reduce because it costs too much mana, but we can Pacify the Elemental. Yeah, Cavalier of Dawn. Got a couple removal spells that maybe help us get the rest of the way. Yeah, we got there. Up to five and three, which is nice. Quests. Uh, I was just checking what our quests were. Okay, so yeah, five and five and three is usually what I'm happy with and ranked. Uh, better than that is nice, but um, yeah. I don't usually bother re-rolling them because I figure, especially when I'm doing a bunch of drafts in a row, I'll eventually just be doing <laughs> the one that they want me to do. Right, I think this is all right. Certainly not a great hand. Hello, Tronalon. Yeah, Sanitarium Skeleton has been better in this format than it is in most. There's just enough powerful things you can do with a recurring body that he gets to be interesting. It's a free attack for them, basically. I mean, uh, you know, I think it was worth the risk. Uh, I mean, I think I attack with Scuttlemutt here and then play Lavakin Brawler. Fair enough. I guess rerolling quests makes sense. It's really not worth risking Blade Brand at this point. Like, if I have mana up, it'll be worth it because I can Vile in response to it, but... I don't understand the Diamond Knight thing, you guys. Like, why? Why do people play Diamond Knight? <laughs> it's just... It's so easy to trade. I mean, I don't get it. Everybody seems to be playing it. And it's not bad, but like it's certainly not a card everyone should be playing. Why did you tap my mana like that? My god. <laughs> oh, I still have Scuttlemutt, so... It's actually okay that my mana got tapped the way it did. Um... Yeah... I think I'll attack with both. Do I bother with Inspired Charge here to take the guy down? Yeah, I think we do. It also lets us do a little more damage. I mean, I don't think it's bad. It's just not... Like, I feel like every deck has one. And it just shouldn't be that way. The more monocolored your deck is, the better it gets. If you have small artifact synergies, which there are a few of in this set, the better it gets. But it's really hard for me to want to play it. I 
Okay. Well, I think because we drew a Rapacious Dragon, we can actually be pretty aggressive here and just attack with both of these. Yeah, we had suspected there might be a Blade Brand. Um, that's okay. Not much of t concern that they can get back here. So because of our Mask of Immolation, they're dead next turn, unless they gain life or play a blocker or kill our Rapacious Dragon. That is none of those things. Got there. This deck did manage to turn the turn the tide. See if we can get to seven with it. I'd be a little surprised if we did. Um, but, you know, it has good removal. It has, you know, evasive win conditions. And it has one close to a bomb in the White Cavalier. So maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Ooh, going first and actually getting Scorch Spitter? That's, that's pretty nice. <laughs> That is pretty nice. Scorch Spitter, I don't think you can run if you don't also have at least a couple smugglers. I think that's what pushes it over to playable. Uh, also, if you have Chandra's Spitfire, like things like that make it playable. Well, that's annoying. Uh, the question is, do I just play my mask and kill that thing? I kind of think I do. Basically, I pay half a card to kill it, so. Nice. So, I don't have anything else to do with my mana <laughs> at this point. Well, yeah, so I'm going to equip it to our Moreland guy and attack with both. And we'll end our turn. As soon as I play a blocker, we can play Glaring Aegis, which is pretty nice. Unless we draw a land, in which case I think we just play our dragon. Yeah, I think we just play our dragon. Um, well, we've got a free attack with our Inquisitor, so I think we'll take it. All right, probably put the Aegis on our dragon next turn. So you guys talking about quests on Arena? I mean, if you get gold, basically, if you play enough blue or green or whatever, you know. Uh, if you've ever played Hearthstone, it's strikingly similar to that. I 
may just be best to play our rip scale predator now too. Let's attack. Play rip scale predator. And then I think next turn we'll probably finally do the Aegis. Well, they're digging for something. I think we go for it here. Do you have a bounce spell or some such thing? Nope. That's not quite as good as having a bounce spell would have been. I think you're still dead unless you have another bounce spell. Yeah, I mean, I think Ripscale Predator's fine to have on top of your curve. I mean, it's not it's not awesome, uh, but it's fine. Didn't really expect this deck to go to seven wins. Especially how it began, but in the end, we did get there. And it only took an hour and a half because of ranked. <laughs> so we went seven and two. Yeah, it was definitely solid, but... Maybe it was even better than I thought it was.